What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and today we discuss LLMNR and BTNS poisoning. LLMNR poisoning is basically an attack vector that someone would use whenever they're attempting to gain access to, let's say, further machines or user credentials within the environment when they already have nothing, like you're starting from scratch. You're just an attacker that's on the Active Directory environment but you have no creds, no usernames, nothing but you want to get a foothold onto that active directory environment this is basically one of those attack vectors but first things first what exactly is llmnr llmnr stands for link local multicast name resolution and it's a protocol based on the dns packet format that allows ipv4 and ipv6 hosts to perform name resolution for hosts on the same local link and if you're familiar with DNS, if, if you're not familiar with DNS, it's basically what you use so that you don't have to keep memorizing a bunch of IP addresses. So let's say, you know, if you're trying to go into Google, you don't have to memorize Google's IP address. You could just type in www.google.com. Um, you don't have to memorize the IP addresses of YouTube. You just type in youtube.com. So that's essentially what DNS is. It handles that resolution for you. So you don't have to actually try and memorize everything. But how can this be abused? After all, name resolution is a good thing, right? So right here we have a diagram, we got a victim machine on the left, DNS server on the top right corner in the middle, and we have an attack machine. These all three machines are on the exact same local network. So the victim machine first makes his initial DNS request for a machine named person. So he goes ahead, he makes that request towards the DNS server, DNS server comes back saying, yo, I have no idea who that machine is. And so victim machines like all right cool let me just ask anyone if anyone knows who pearson is or how to connect to pearson and so this is when we have our attack machine they're on that exact same local network so our machine's sitting there right it's waiting for these requests to come in and then this is where it basically lies it's like yeah i know exactly where that machine is just send me your stuff and then the victim machine's like okay here you go i'm gonna send my username and my ntlm version 2 hash so an NTLM version 2 hash is basically a specific type of hash is different than an NT hash and a NTLM hash that you'd find when you use like something like Mimikatz on a Windows machine whenever you're dumping like the SAM database. Like you can't do a pass the hash attack, you can't do an overpass the hash attack uh, to grab Kerberos tickets to try and do certain things. So that net NTLM version 2 hash is specifically for challenge slash response authentication whenever it tries to attempt to connect to other machines. Once we fool that victim machine into giving us its net NTLM version 2 hash, there's one of two different things that we can do or attempt to do. One, we grab that net NTLM version 2 hash and try to crack it offline. Or two, we do something called SMB relay. It's basically this. As the net NTLM version 2 hash comes to us, we take that hash and then we kind of toss it over to other machines inside the same network to see what we can gain access to. Think of it similar to pass the hash with an NT hash, like if you get, if you dump a Windows SAM database and then you try and grab someone's NT hash or LM hash or whatever, and then you try and see what they can connect to, it's basically the same idea. But instead, in this case, the user that actually made that request on the victim machine must have local admin privileges on one of those machines that you're trying to toss it to in order for you to be able to connect it to in order for you to be able to connect to it again my words all twist up forgive me <laughs> but yes in order for you to be able to connect to one of those machines that you're throwing that net ntlm version 2 hash at the user that was on the victim machine must have local administrative privileges on that machine that you're tossing the hash to and if they do then we can dump out the entire SAM database, grab everyone's hashes, and then call it a day. So for the first demo, I'm just gonna capture the net NTLM version 2 hash and then crack it offline. And then for the second one, do the SMB relay. So I'm gonna get that net NTLM version 2 hash and then I'm just gonna throw it around to see which machines that user from the victim machine was able to access. So the tool I'm gonna use for this is called Responder. So just Responder-I eat zero for my network interface. And for some reason, I don't know why these two errors keep showing up. It's like ever since I updated it, like if I do netstat and and just grep, like I don't see anything that's using. I don't see anything that's using four four three. On my end, nor I don't know why WinRM. I was WinRM. 
like I don't, I don't get it i don't know but <laughs> anyway so we just want to have this running what we're going to do now is actually go to another windows machine that's connected to the domain and force that request the reason why we're going to have to force it is because i only have like a limited number of machines in this domain and uh most likely if you're inside of an environment with like obviously 50 plus machines then there's going to be a lot of activity that's going on so let's go up in here and type in like test let's see what happens check back at responder and we've gotten a hash for the user amos so now that we've captured that let's save it let's do nano hash why not so now with this hash we've captured we can actually attempt to crack it using john And just like that, we were able to crack it. Ice cream 10 with a capital I. What we can actually do from her that now we have that user's clear text password is use something like crack map exec to see what that user can actually access. So let's do that. We can use crack map exec, SMB, the subnet, the user AMOS, and the password ice cream 10, and then execute that. Zoom out here a little bit. All right. That looks horrible. <laughs> All those errors. But uh, looks like the DC. All right. So this user must probably have been, uh, most likely will be a domain admin. So what we can do from here is use secret stump to actually dump the uh, ntds.dit file on the domain controller. So we can do that using secretsdump.py just dc and then a moss at ecorp.local then the password ice cream 10 enter and we were able to dump all of the hashes from the domain controller because a moss happened to be a domain admin all right, so first things first, when it comes to SMB Relay, um, first off, I tend to want to discover which machines inside my environment were actually vulnerable to this, because it doesn't make any sense trying to run this against machines that are clearly patched. So I usually do that using this command, using the nmap scripting engine, SMB2, security mode. Um, so what we're gonna do is gonna scan the entire subnet on port 445, and if certain machines come back saying either SMB signing disabled, or message sign enabled but not required that basically means that machine is vulnerable and we're okay to use that in the attack so let's go ahead and run it now going through our scan we want to take note of all the ones that have message signing enabled but not required so we got one two three all right so we got three hosts that are vulnerable to this so just copy these because we're going to need them for later let me just open up a uh, text editor. Put these down. Just want the IP addresses. Okay, so now that we have our targets, on to the next thing. All right, so the next thing that we wanna do is actually access the responders config file and disable SMB and HTTP. So I believe that is in user, share, responder file should be in here um yeah right there responder.com so let's just do nano response responder.conf and then smb let's set this to off and then http set this to off as well save it we then just want to run responder Now I actually want to put all of these IPs into a file. So let me do nano targets.txt, paste them in there. And then we're going to be using ntlm relayx.py to do the relaying over to those machines for us using the targets in our list. So let's just do ntlm relayx.py tf our targets file and then dash smb 
to support then hit enter leave that running and now any hash that comes towards uh responder instead of it just showing up here it will actually go to here first and then it'll take it to here and then this will take those hashes and it'll relay them over to the machines in our target list attempting to connect but the only way for this to be able to work like i said before that victim that's on like the user on that victim machine actually has to either be a local administrator on one of these machines that we're trying to authenticate to or they have to be a domain administrator so either one of those two all right let's go ahead and forge that request let's do slash slash test one two three hit enter now let's check back and we've got some hashes so the user that we made that request with must have either been a local administrator on one of these machines or a domain admin now that the demo is finished uh, mitigation techniques how would you prevent both of these attacks from happening so in the case of llmnr and mbtns poisoning um, the best choice of action would just to be delete both of them disable them reason being because if dns fails it'll hop over to llmnr and if llmnr fails it'll hop over to nbtns automatically so what you want to do is actually cut those two out and just leave it as dns and for smb relay besides one of the ways being uh, to just completely disable ntlm authentication within the network you can enable smb signing on all your devices like this would basically completely put an end to this entire attack and that is it for the video if you enjoyed this hit that thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more content like this and um i'll catch you guys in the next video see ya